Welcome everyone to the Moiski News for July the 10th, 2020. Today what I thought we could do, because this could be quite entertaining, is do a Where Is He Now? on Jeremy Corbyn. He's been a busy, busy boy since he moved back to the uh, backbenches. Yes, very busy boy. But not just himself, his family too. And it's worth addressing what's been going on, not just with what he does on social media, what he's been doing while keeping those backbenches warm, how his allies have all but been removed from high office, effectively ending the reign of Corbynista terror, but also what has been going on around him. We could start with the fact that for the better part of two weeks now, Jeremy Corbyn has been hemorrhaging followers on Twitter. That could have something to do with the number of articles that have finally started circulating, saying what we have all been saying, myself included, when he started ruling the Labour Party. But I'm going to start with his son. His son runs a hemp store in Finsbury Park, and it has on a number of occasions been vandalised by a man who has shattered the windows and painted swastikas on what glass remain. The man, though, oddly enough, has been compared to appearing to look like his father, because his dad also looks like a cross between a dishevelled homeless man and Wurzel Gummidge. While I think it's okay to criticise Jeremy Corbyn when it came to anti-Semitism, I don't believe in guilt by association, therefore those who are vandalising his store because of his father, you need to stop. It's a dick move. Other people in his family that have been involved in politics would include his brother, Piers Corbyn, who has been quite an interesting fellow, to say the least. Not least because, during the coronavirus lockdown, Piers Corbyn decided, oh, whoa, let's start some mass protests. And, um, let's go to trial for that. Piers Corbyn is a vastly different politics-typed person to his brother, so it's really interesting to see such a conflict, and he has a fantastic mane of hair that I really want to stroke. With Jeremy Corbyn's Twitter following hemorrhaging a little, because it could change, but then again, as he is now considered irrelevant by political standards, he is more than likely going to struggle to gain viewers and followers unless he changes tact or gains some more support. All the tweets that were targeted at him by J.K. Rowling have been doing their rounds. J.K. Rowling absolutely mocked the living feck out of him because of his rather entertaining stance on Brexit. If anyone ever remembers it, it was, he doesn't have one, and then it was, I want to remain, but we'll give the people another chance to choose, um, and I might ignore him at the same time. The tweets J.K. Rowling sent to Jeremy Corbyn only really came back into light because of a more recent commentary that has gotten her a considerable amount of flack, including apparent cancellation. In the tweets that she targeted at Jeremy Corbyn, She said that his bringing a jobs first Brexit was bollocks and described Jeremy Corbyn as in third place after Pontus May. But this is not the coup de grace. The coup de grace is the fact that the media have finally, finally, cottoned on to what many commentators on YouTube and other social media platforms have been saying for years when Jeremy was leader. And that was he does not believe in democracy. Proof of that was the fact that even though he wanted to give the people a second chance at voting, it was known that he himself may have chosen to ignore it and ignoring the will of his own party. The fact it took them this long to realise this is a damning statement for how inept they are as journalists. It was very clear from the offset because even though a referendum had happened, they wanted to campaign for another because apparently three years is a generation of voters. It's not. It's a new age of additional entitled voters. And quite frankly, just because they didn't get to vote then does not mean they get to vote now as a do-over. That happens every three years when new voters come forward as a way of trying to outvote the older voters who predominantly voted to leave. Political journalists, including Robert Peston, have started being a little more vocal when it comes to looking back at what Jeremy Corbyn tried to do and how it fell apart. Oh, and another warning sign that Labour were guaranteed to lose was when Emily Thornberry on Question Time said, I would campaign for a new deal 
a better deal, but then I would campaign to remain right. Do what's best for the country, and then remain right. I think it's fairly obvious now why Labour lost. And Jeremy Corbyn's legacy is going to be one that people will look at and say, this is how someone gets five years, two elections, continues to stay in office, loses a vote of no confidence, still stays in office, and only walks away when they've actually done something so damaging it's going to take a long time to repair the party. Hundreds of councillors gone. No more MEPs, although I don't think you have many left after the last election regardless. And your opposition in government have an 80-seat majority. Oof. Strongholds. Eroded. And let's not forget here, you have that report coming out, don't you, this year? The one into anti-Semitism? Yes. That's going to do some damage, and it could get quite expensive. I wonder if that membership's going to go up to accommodate for that. Or are you just going to seize the means of production? Ah, via membership. With what has happened and what Jeremy has done, I'd like to know what you think. Please do let me know in the comments down below. As a final thing, there will be a political recap stream here tonight with Trump's LP. Hope to see you all there.